Alright guys, here we go. And the bar which let me invite him. Leon Chanik. Ante! <laughs> What's up, Davor? How are you doing, my friend? Dobar dan. Dobar dan, da, da. Svi jezik pričaju. Dobar dan yeah. i dobro došli. <laughs> tako je, tako je. Good. Uh, yes. Ante, just uh, let the guys know for the sound. Let me just see. Guys, give us a thumbs up if the sound is okay. I know I'm in a room where it echoes a little bit, but I hope it's going to be still okay. And, um, all right, Ante, so after, we're, we're going to do it in English, and uh, after sure. 60, 60 Instagram lives, I finally got you on. <laughs> well, the, you know, the truth is actually, you know, you've been chasing me for, since, what, 2017? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> back then, there was no Instagram live, so... So uh, I was like, uh, you know, like, let's wait for something, you know, more concrete. Uh, you remember it was like, uh, you were, you were, when you started, you were uh, like recording the questions, right? Yeah. And, and then you would uh, send it to the people and then they would yeah. have to record themselves and, uh, mm -hmm. and send the answers back, which, uh, yeah, like, uh, it, it didn't seem like the most, you know, efficient, effective, like, effective, effective but like, uh, it was, it was the only thing. Yeah. So, yeah, but, uh like uh i was i was following some of your uh, instagram lives and uh yeah you had a lot of amazing people from tennis you know like uh as the as the coach peter said the other day you know like uh, here's the goat <laughs> ah. so, <laughs> it's uh yeah it's well done well done really good. now you're on the, now you're on the show with the goat so, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. so no but you know having you on here so we're gonna have probably next week fernando gonzalez it's going to be another good one. So I'm oh, excited. wow. It's amazing, yeah. I saw some really good people lately, like Philip Pussis. Yeah, but... Uh, Mary Pierce. Yeah, but... Wow, I mean, this is tough to name all of them. It's like, you know... But Paul having Anacon, you on here, like, Ante... Coaches, you know, Paul Anacon. Wow, it's like the guy who is coaching Sampras and Federer. I mean, you know, can you yeah. get anybody better than that? <laughs> you know, it's like... It's, 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 it's tough. It's, it's tough. It's but great. having you on here, for me, it's important because... You, you know, let, let's go right into it. Yeah. So, you know, you had an interesting journey where I want to go later on on it. You know, you started as a singles player and now you mainly play doubles. So this is one big thing I want to talk in a bit. But as I do with everybody, you know, I want to ask you, how did you start and where did you start? You mean generally with the tennis? Mm -hmm. or? Yeah, I started, uh, I was like five or six. Um, so my father uh, is a head coach in a, in, a, in a small club in our home, hometown called Ogulin. Mm -hmm. It's a really small city, you know, 10,000 people live there. And, um, Close to Zagreb. Know, it's one hour away from Zagreb. So uh, that's how I started, you know, the father was all his life into tennis. He was playing tennis and handball as well. But tennis was his love, and uh, you know he 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 was coaching uh, in different parts of the Croatia, and then like obviously living in Ogulin, you know that's where he you know joined the cl the club. There was a you know go the club is going from fifty something, I guess it's like a, you know it's a, it's already a big tradition, and uh, and um, yeah, when I was a kid, you know, like I was every day on the tennis, and that's that's how that's how the thing started. You know, I, I liked tennis, I liked uh, to play soccer as well, so I always had a passion for sport. But then, of course, tennis was my love, and uh, and uh, you know, I started, started playing tournaments when I was eight or nine, um, and then under ten, uh, I was you know one of the best in Croatia, and then uh, later on, I was struggling a little bit when I was twelve and fourteen. But then when I was 16 and 18, I was again like top three players in my generation and uh, playing, you know, national uh, championships, uh, European championships for, for Croatia and uh, stuff like that. So I kind of, you know, like I knew like I want to, you know, go seriously into it when I was maybe, let's say, 14, 15, mm -hmm. because uh, when I finished the primary school in Ogulin, I... Um, uh, with my father together and with my family, you know, the mother and everybody else, we decided to go to Zagreb to give a chance to my tennis, you know, to improve more and get more more um, uh, players to play with. 
And um, when I was 17, uh, I had my first coach besides my father, you know. Uh, that's where we, you know, started to, to, to go, like, you know, more seriously into it. And, um, and yeah, and then I decided to, to go professional, you know, right after high school. I started, I started with the professional tennis. And then you, you started as everybody, I guess, you played like satellites at that time and then futures and... Uh... Actually, when I, was, when I was 17, it was the last year of the satellites. There was, uh... I think I was 17, I'm pretty sure, 16 or 17. So I actually played one of those, you know, I just played one tournament. It was a week before the big junior tournament in Croatia. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, like uh, I went to play the qualies and uh, to have a, you know, match play before the, the junior tournament. And that was the only satellite that I, that I ever played in my life because after that, you know, the, there was only futures. Yeah, yeah they changed change it to futures. Yeah, change it to futures. I mean, I think at that time there was already futures and satellites, yes. you know, combined. But then, uh, then it started from the year after, like they removed the satellites completely from the schedule. Yeah. That's when, when I, I still played, they had the satellites and then they had the most, like, you know, Croatia, for people who don't know, they had like Rovinji, Poric, and then... Yeah, uh, Istarska Riviera. Yeah. yeah, I remember. That's, yeah. that's one of the tough things, you know, when I played, uh, I never forget that because it's a start in the, in the season, in the clay court season, and mm -hmm. they had 128 draw in the pre-qualifying, and 128 draw in the qualifying, and then and then you know that's it's already crazy, unbelievable. So mm -hmm. so what was your so so um, you know like all the levels from from futures to challenger to the ATP tournaments. So so when did you play your first challenger, Ante? Do you remember? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, let me remember. <laughs> I'm not sure was it was it in Zagreb, the Zagreb Challenger, or was it like in a region like Banja Luka Challenger, maybe? Okay, so somewhere somewhere in the Balkan. Somewhere in ex Yugoslavia, yeah, yeah. Um, I really I have a hard time to remember. I think it was Zagreb, to be honest. Okay. Um, and um, but then like you know like I was, I was uh, like very quickly I decided like yeah I got to start play you know qualities of challengers more and more. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, the futures, first of all, they were very strong when I was starting, you know, like there was not many futures around, uh, you know, ex-Yugoslavia region. So, um, so and they were all strong. And then on top of that, you, you got to win them or, you know, play the finals or something to, to get like a bigger amount of the points. And then from, from other side, if you play, you know, challenger qualities and you qualify, you already get the same amount as you would play, like, let's say, semifinals of the future, you know. Mm -hmm. So my logic was, okay, like, I'd rather go to play challengers, you know, like, I'm going to actually have very strong matches there as well. But, you know, if I qualify to the main draw, it's a bigger prize money, you know, yeah. it's, a, it's just like a more professional environment, you know, and, uh, and, and you have a chance to, to, you know, if you qualify, you already have s solid amount of the points for, you know, on your account, but you have a chance to go for much more, you know, so... Uh, so that's you know, my logic was like you know start to play qualities challenger even that when I was like six seven hundred in the world you know so um, and then that time obviously the you know the qualities row was thirty two mm -hmm. they just changed it like a year ago which I'm not a big fan of to be honest you know like I think it's really just making it tougher for everybody you know like because before you are thousand in the world or thousand five hundred and you still have a good chance to get into the challenger qualities now. You know, Almost it's, impossible. Um, it's like you got to be top 500, let's say. You know? Okay, some weeks it drops, but, uh, you know, it's like, it's just unnecessary in my opinion. But, okay, you know, it's just my opinion. So. No, uh, definitely. Look, it's not just your opinion. I think, mm -hmm. I think the majority of the players below. Like, yeah, I would agree players. with you. Yeah. So, so, so mm -hmm. Ante, that's one, one thing I wanted to talk to you about, mm -hmm. you know, the, like, you know, a little bit like about price money and like getting into the challengers now. I know you play now since, it's like, how many years on the tour? 13 years on the tour? Yeah, since uh, I was basically 18, 17, 17, 18, 18 yeah. yeah. Let's say since I was 18, it started yeah. really seriously, you know, like, yeah. So let's say 13 years, yeah. So, 
you know, I mean, you've been through all the tournaments and all the levels, and you know, we know each other very well. And for me, it's always hard to see that a guy with so much talent, and you know, as I know you personally, I can say that, uh, you know, we went to Del Rey when you played with Kecmanovic this year, and you, you're such an amazing player, and it's always hurting to see that someone like this, knowing someone personally, you know, struggles, has to struggle financially to mm -hmm. get the training they need, to get the travel, mm -hmm. to, mm -hmm. you know, all, all those things. So, so I, I, I want you to tell me a little bit, you know, like about, about that. How, how do you play yeah, it's... here, you know, and how, how, how it actually is. I want people to know, you know, that it's, that it's not easy to be right, right now yeah. on the door the top 100 and still having to, to, to have a hard time, you know, to find sponsors, to find anything. Yeah, it's, it's not easy, especially when you come from such a small country and, you know, where there is not a lot of support, um, you know, from the federation and uh, from uh, club, like, because it's just like, it's a, you know, there's not much money, you know, so it's, it is what it is. And then, you know, you, we all kind of dream of playing all those big, big tournaments and playing professionally, but then when you get into it, then you actually realize, you know, how the things are working and how tough it is and, uh, you know, I was I was lucky that a really good family friend of ours like uh, helped me helped me out financially when I was starting with all this. Um, but even that was just like a very basics, you know, to to cover, you know, like some coaching. And uh, I was still not traveling, you know, a lot with my coaches on the tournaments. It would be just like, you know, like let's say once in month or once in two months, you know, and. Um, um, if I would be, you know, back starting now, like 17 or something, you know, I, I, I think the college in States would be like amazing opportunity, you know, uh, because back then when you know, 13 years ago, when I was starting, the mentality was still about the college. Okay. If you go to the college in States, you lose four years mm -hmm. and like, you can say goodbye to your professional career almost, you, you know, it was, it was most of the people were thinking like that. And, uh, but in the meantime, it changed a lot. And now, like, you can see, you know, the college level really increased and uh, a lot of good players are coming out. And uh, the, the level, like, you know, last year, for example, the level was amazing, you know, like I was following it a little bit. And uh, a lot, lot of Europeans are coming, you know, and uh, it's, 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 a, it's a great opportunity, you know. So, so uh, yeah, I started without that. I started going straight into the professional level. You know, um, I would say... Um, I was struggling a little bit at the beginning because, like, uh, mentally, you know, I was not mature enough. I was, you know, breaking a lot under the pressure, putting a lot of expectations on me. And then uh, it took a while to get a little bit higher. I think I started playing much better when I was 23 or 24, which, you know, when you put into the perspective, it would be right after college, right? Yeah. So uh, that's where I, for the first time, felt like, okay, now I got a game, you know, like to do something more. I uh, have you know, much more confidence. Like I, I know what I'm doing on the court. You know, like I know how to play, how to cope with uh, certain expectations and pressure and all this. And um, and that's where I started. You know, to to to. I played my first um, Grand Slam in 2014 in Australian Open, and uh, I was 20. I was 25, almost 25. So 20, 24. You know, getting 25. So um, um, that's where things got a little bit easier. You know, you get in the Grand Slams. There's a little bit bigger prize money. You can start, you know, uh, putting your own money into the, your career, schedule the things. Um, I was doing really well. Uh, I was by, uh, by September of, um, of 2014, I was 130. Yeah. 132, 132, I think, was the highest ranking. And... Um, um, and then, like, you know, I had a little bit bad luck. I got the monoposis, was six months out, you know, dropped in the rankings back to, like, five, 600, had to go all through all this again, then got another injury. I was another six months out. And then kind of things, you know, got much tougher. You know, financially, I, w I was not making as much as I would make in, you know, throughout the 2014. So, like, I had a hard time to, to have the same setup with the coaches. And, um, you know, it's just like, it gets, it gets like a little bit tiring, of course, you know, like when you, you, when you know where, where you were and when you know where you're right now and you still, 
you know, you cannot have the same setup. So I was start, you know, I started to think about the doubles in the last two years. And uh, basically last year I decided, in the middle of last year, I decided, okay, you know, because I always liked to play doubles. It was also something that I enjoyed, you know, even though I got to say I still maybe prefer singles a little bit more, you know, but uh, last year I enjoyed it a lot, played with Tomislav Berkic, uh, many tournaments we, we won, uh, five or six challengers and uh, uh, we got to almost top 100, you know, and uh, beginning of this year, uh, we started actually a few tournaments. We were not the way we wanted, but then we had a, we had a first semifinals on the ATP 250 level, mm -hmm. uh, playing against uh, my... Uh, Matt uh, uh, <laughs> Yeah, we call, each, we call each other like half brothers, you know, Paul, Paul <laughs> Brad, because <laughs> we are not related uh, actually at all. So we played against him and uh, Nikola Čačić, the Serbian guy who, who did amazing, you know, end of last year and beginning of this year before Corona, lost very closely. We had a chances to win the first set and um, they ended up winning the tournament, you know. So so that was the first bigger result on the ATP level. And um, and then we saw each other in Delray Beach. Yeah. You know, that's where I played with Kacmanovic. Unfortunately, yeah. we lost 7-6, 7-5 to Taylor Fritz and, uh, and uh, Tommy Paul. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. that was the last tournament before Corona. So, <laughs> so, so under, you know, that's what I wanted to go. So let, let's go. Let's go to the to the singles years. So mm -hmm. when you played the which one was it against with the French Open, right? So you you qualified for the French Open and you were mm -hmm. match points down against Kokinakis, right? Exactly. Yeah. The last round of qualies, I played the uh, Kokinakis. And uh, I was match point down one or two. I've, I think it was only one in a 5-4 in a third, but I was serving. So I remember I hit a really good second serve like in, into his body and he was, you know, he was late. He, he, he missed it. Uh, then I ended up winning at 7-5. And, um, and that was my first time I qualified for, um, for the French Open. It was actually the first time I played the French Open at all. Because you know? so, like just a few months before that, I played my first Grand Slam in uh, Australian Open. And then, uh, so Kyrgios was watching the match, right? Because Kyrgios Kokinatis was... and Kyrgios are good friends. So mm. what did Kyrgios do when the match was over? I want people to know, because everybody thinks always, you know, so I like him so much, I think yeah. he's a great guy, mm. right? So, so tell, tell, tell him what... what yeah, yeah, it's it's interesting that you remember all this, like, uh, we talked a lot <laughs> over the past few years, but, you know, you, you got to, re to remember all these details. So yeah, he, he, he was you know watching the match and then after the match he came to me and he's like, man, like well played, you know, like really well played end of the third set and uh, well you know good luck for uh, for the main draw. You know? So I was really surprised, you know, because like I I saw him maybe a few times before that match, you know, we didn't really get to know each other, but just you know he was he was really cool and like you know it was it was nice to hear that, yeah. And that's another yeah. thing, you know, talking about Kyrgios when we went to Delray Beach, you know. I remember, you know, like he, he was so nice. Like there was an older lady giving the waters out all the time. I want people to know, you know. And mm -hmm. Every time he got a water, he's like, "Ma'am, would you please? Do you need help with anything? Can I help you?" He was super nice. So <laughs> you know that too. You know, the, the, the court and the off court is completely different. Different story. Different, right? yeah. so you have to yeah. get to know the people better to judge. Exactly. Them. Yeah. Yeah. I, I also have the same opinion about him. You know, it's like. Um, a lot of positives, you know, off the court. Then, of course, on court, we all know how he is, you know, and like what you. It's it's pretty entertaining, you know, which maybe it's not it's not bad either, you know, like to have somebody like that, you know, like. Yeah. But yeah, like we we all know that he can do better when, than what he's doing. So hopefully, you know, yeah, he's gonna come. Yeah. It, hopefully, it's gonna come. So mm. so Ante, the same year, you played Wimbledon and you qualified. And you beat Falia, and then you played Lopez, right? So, mm -hmm. so, so you know, you can see always the tendency. You, you played Australian Open qualify, you qualify for French Open, it goes up. Then you play Wimbledon, mm -hmm. you qualify, you beat Falia. Maybe tell us in a couple of sentences how it was mm -hmm. to play Falia and uh, and Lopez, and what how you went in there. Yeah, like uh, it's it's really important to mention that when I qualified in French Open, I played Gilles Simon in the first round, <laughs> and uh, that was on the big court and like first time you know playing on Suzanne Leglen, and uh, I was really you know super nervous and just you know didn't play good you know even though with Kokinakis just a few days before I probably played the best match in, on the clay in my career, 
but then a few like few days later you know playing on a, such a huge court and you know it was kind of rainy and cold and like completely different conditions and i just you know didn't perform well at all and like lost pretty easy but then you know that experience helped me so much more like a basically month later in wimbledon you know and uh, i was way more you know comfortable playing the first round of this main draw slam you know against alejandro falla uh i was pretty loose because you know i knew how good he was on the on the grass and uh, actually he 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 came from halle playing uh, finals of halle losing to roger 7676 it's crazy. So, so, so when I saw, okay, the guy just played finals of ATP Halle, you know, 500, losing to the, you know, <laughs> best player ever to play in the sport, 7676. So like, you know, what can you lose there? Like, just go out and play. You know, it's like, and uh, yeah, I won the first set 6-4, uh, got kind of lucky to break him and, uh, you know, ended up, you know, close the, close the first set. And then the second set and the majority of the third set, I played the best tennis in my life, you know, I got completely you know, loose and uh, er everything was just going well. And he was, you know, probably struggling a little bit, not playing his best tennis maybe, you know, and uh, and uh, ended up being, you know, like pretty easy victory when you look at the score, you know. So uh, it was, uh, I think, 6-4, six, 6-3, six, six, And uh, it was very special because uh, my parents were there, you know, the, were, the friend, friend, friend of ours was there, you know, who was helping us a little bit financially and... Uh, you know, my mom was flying first time in her life, you know, to the, to, to, like, first time in her life she was flying somewhere, you know. So wow. it was very, 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 very emotional for her and for me and for everybody. So, um, that's so awesome. No one um, can take that memory. Yeah. You know? Yeah. 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 And then, uh, and Anton, and then, before you go to Faya, mm -hmm. you, you know, when I had Michael, Michael Russell on here, you mm -hmm. know, like, uh, it's funny because you mentioned you played Faya and he was, you know, the, the favorite. He just played Federer. And a lot of people don't know Michael Russell when he played, I think it was 2000 French Open, when he played Gustavo Curtin. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if it was 2000, 2001. So he told me on the show too, he's like, you know, you know, before the match, they came to me and say, hey, good job. You know, kind of saying like, now you can go home, you play Google, right? <laughs> and he, he told the story. I thought that was so funny. He's like, you know, yeah, very well done, man. But, you know, now... And then um, Michael went up, first set one, and then he said two, oh, oh, Gustavo Curtin got so tight. Then mm -hmm. he won the second set, and, and he had even match point against Curtin and lost. And that's, I think, that year Curtin won the French Open. The French Open, wow. Uh, and, you know, that was quarterfinals. So probably Faya thought, you know, that, you know, like who, you know, Ante, yeah, I got this. And then, as you said, you won the first set, and then they get tight too. You know, mm -hmm. the, the, the really yeah, yeah, I mean, everybody gets tight, you know, that's... It's uh, it's a completely normal thing, and like, uh, okay, well, this is a little bit off topic, but now in the past few months, you know, I'm I'm staying in uh, in LA, and uh, obviously didn't have much opportunity, you know, to play and stuff. So I had a few people that I was helping out a little bit, let's say, as a coach, even though I'm not calling myself a coach, but just you know, like a few good juniors, and then like, you know, I'm trying to tell them like, listen, you know, you gotta got to understand, you know, everybody, you know, no matter how nervous you feel on the court, it's a big chance. It's the same thing, you know, happening on the other side of the court and don't just focus on yourself. You know, you got, you got to remind yourself, you know, like it's, there is a lot of pressure on the other, on, on the other part of the court as well, you know, so it's really tough, you know, it's not easy to, it's easy for me to say that because I've been through that and I learned on my own experience, you know, so uh, when you say something to that, to younger, you know, juniors, it's, um, you know, it's really tough to, to really um, put in their mind what you actually mean, you know, it's mm -hmm. because the words can, sometimes cannot describe the, exactly what you, what, you, what you think and what you mean. And I think, you know, I can see the, the, co the, the coaching is not that easy, you know, like it's not easy to put, you know, to give to your players something that you really trying to you know to, to give him you know so sometimes the words cannot describe it perfectly right now no, you know how i feel <laughs> <laughs> exactly exactly yeah. and then, by the no, way i just i just saw the interesting comment here from magda Linette. she says uh, uh tell the story how i beat you in the serve, serve boxes game you know? <laughs> and uh it was uh, it was actually right before wimbledon you know like uh magda is a really good friend of mine she's top 50 wta right now Mm -hmm. Someone that you might, you should think maybe to, you know, do the live with, amazing person. Yeah, tell, and tell her, her, tell her what I want her on because I, I had maybe 10 ladies, you know, I had Monica Puig, 
And, oh, uh, I saw that. Yeah. I had uh, Mary Pierce. Mary Pierce. Would be nice to have her. You can you yeah. can write her later for me. And also her coach Izo Junic. I don't know if you know him, the Croatian guy. No. Mm -hmm. He's uh, somebody that uh, is has a lot of interesting stories and yeah. somebody that started the coaching out of nowhere, you know. And I have a lot of respect uh, uh, for him. Uh, probably the you know the one of the coaches that I respect the most from Croatia. You know, it's him. Okay. So. That's that's uh, something I could, could you, give, you, give you a suggestion. Yeah, I'll, definitely. Yeah. You make me the contact. I'll do. Yeah. Did, did she really beat you? She actually, <laughs> yeah, she actually beat me. Of course, I was not. Yeah, you know, it was a, like a mini tennis, and uh, yeah, I was trying to be generous, but then she, you know, she she took advantage of it, and like you know, she still to this day, you know, she's like she doesn't want to give me a revenge, and she's just saying like I beat you. That's it. <laughs> so, <laughs> So, uh, yeah. Yeah. Love, love that. All right, yeah. let's get back to Feliciano. So Feliciano, that's another one I'm working on to have on the show. So, you know, I have some help from the Spanish coaches, so hopefully I get mm -hmm. one. Um, so Feliciano, unreal lefty serve, right? So he doesn't hit the hardest serve, but he puts it like this to the corners, you know? Mm -hmm. So, um, so how, how, how did you get in there? What was your preparation in that match? Did you just say, look, I'm happy I won the first round and I just don't have anything to lose. You go in mm -hmm. there or how was the mentality when you go in there? Well, the mentality was, you know, it's from one perspective, from one point of view, you were kind of satisfied. Okay, you just did like the best result of your career. But then from the other point of view, like you're confident and you, you, you want more. more. You want more, of course, you know. <laughs> and uh, Feliciano had like really good um, leading up, you know, like leading up, leading up tournaments to the Wimbledon, I think he won both the Queens and Eastbourne, if I'm right. I think it was two tournaments in a row that he won right before the Wimbledon. And uh, But then in the first round, I saw he beat uh, Sugita, uh, Yuichi Sugita, who was at that time qualifier, same as me. And he beat him like 7-6, 7-6, 7-6, you know. So it showed me like, wow, you know, it's actually, it's actually possible. You know, it's like I shouldn't be just going there and like, hoping to give like a good you know um show. good performance good show good performance and you know get out of the court so uh for some reason he was uh i actually put a little bit more expectations you know and i first said i didn't play that well it was like four six one break but pretty pretty easy for him and then uh, and then the second set was much more competitive and we went to the tie break i remember i had four two in the tie break i had a you know mini break and uh, I was serving for 5-2. Unfortunately, I didn't win that serve. You know, if I would if I would have won, maybe things would be a little bit different in that second set. But, you know, on the end, he, he ended up winning the second set. And then the third set was, uh, I believe, 7-5. One break on 5-all. So it was, it was still pretty decent level. But I, I felt like I just didn't have that zone which I had in a, in a, in a, in a run before, which is completely normal. It's, it doesn't happen. You know, it happens maybe once a year, you know, that kind of zone which I had. Um, in the first round, and uh, and um, yeah, it was that was an interesting experience, you know, like playing in Wimbledon second round, uh, you know, like first time being in Wimbledon, literally, you know, I never been in Wimbledon before that, wow. and uh, um, and uh, yeah, it was it was really special. So then, as you said earlier, unfortunately, injuries came. You know, you had mono for half Actually, I got to mention one more thing. Like, yeah. right after that, I went to States and I played the Newport, you know, the on grass yeah. as well, in the, the club where it's the Hall of Fame. And I qualified there as well, won a round, and then lost to Leighton Hewitt in the second round. Yeah, so... That was, that was a great experience as well. And that was the last tournament that Hewitt yeah. ever won. Wow. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, so, yeah. Okay. So, talking about Hewitt, just quickly, mm. he was known as one of the best returners as well, obviously. Mm. So, how was it serving against him? <laughs> <laughs> that was a really interesting experience because, uh, for some reason, uh, he he, you know, when we when we went on the court and when we started the warm up, um, he was like literally missing every second ball, you know, either in the net or long. And I realized it's on purpose, you know, because uh, you know, like you can just you can just tell, you know, it's like it happens once, twice, but then it happens every single time. It's like he probably didn't want to give me any rhythm, you know, playing from the back. And, you know, like such experienced player knows exactly mm -hmm. how to throw you off with all li li all these little details, you know. And um, I lost like three and three pretty comfortably. You know, he was returning real well and uh, just being solid overall, you know, like throwing some servant wallets out of nowhere, 
then playing some amazing drop, uh, passing shots and, you know, just being solid, playing very flat, you know, which it's really tough to play against these kind of players on the grass because the, the ball stays low anyway. And then when he plays, when somebody plays as flat as him, it's, it's even tougher. And, um, yeah, like, uh, I felt like he was playing really well and, you know, he ended up winning the tournament, which, as I said, like, I, was, I just realized maybe last year or two years ago that it was the, the last tournament he ever won, you know, so. Okay, that's, so, that's so a good one to know. Interesting, yeah, yeah. All right, and Anthony, you got, you no, know, obviously, unfortunately, all the injuries and everything, so it is massively hard to get back in the singles ranking without financial support and, you know, like, so, so, so you started to play doubles a little bit more, as you said, with Brkic, and mm -hmm. you're knocking on the door right now at the top 100. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. so tell us, you know, the life on tour difference, like when you go from singles to doubles, like what, what the change? I mean, you depend on someone else when you play, right? So if you lose, doesn't that always mean that it's mm. your fault? It can be, you can play well and your partner can play bad. So it's, it's, mm. a, it's a mm. symbiosis of, of both of you. So, so, you know, what do you like about playing doubles? compared to singles? Yeah, it's, a, it's, a, it's basically a different sport, you know. It's one thing when you play singles and then, like, you have doubles kind of on side, you know, like, it's, it's a great to play, you know, the, the match, maybe to feel the conditions before your singles match. You know, you generally, when you focus on the singles, you just play so much more relaxed doubles. And then, you know, like, it, everything seems so much easier. Also with the rules, you know, there is a, there is a no edge scoring, there is a super tie break. But then, like, you know, now I got to experience since end of the last year mm -hmm. where I started to play some tournaments, only doubles. So that was for the first time in my career that I didn't play any singles, only doubles. And um, it's a completely different story, you know. Like, you come to the tournament, obviously, okay, you play doubles, but there is no anymore, you know, like, that comfortable feeling, okay, it's just doubles, you know. Now it's, it's all you got, right? So... Uh, from that point of view, it's it's a different mental perspective, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, you have your partner that you have to, you know, accept that he's sometimes going to play better than you or a little bit worse than you, you know. Like, you're both going to do some, you know, easy mistakes or mistakes in the wrong time on the break points and stuff like that. So, that's, like I said, it's a completely different sport. You have to adapt. You have to have a lot of understanding for your partner because he's, you know, going through the, you know, mental pressure as well as, as you, you know. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, sometimes it's going to work, but sometimes uh, it's not going to work, you know. So, like, we went, for example, beginning of this year, first two tournaments were in Bangkok, two challengers. We lost, like, first and second round, you know. And, like, you know, like, you fly to Bangkok, you know, like, you spend, we spend more money on the, on the flights than what we got the prize money from the challenger, first and second round losses. And, uh, but you have to accept it, you know, because like, otherwise, you know, there's no other way, you know, you either quit or you accept it, it's like that. And until you're not reaching the higher level in doubles, you know, the ATP level, you shouldn't be expecting any, any, like really, you know, any money, really bigger money coming into your account. So, uh, like I said, from, you know, it's a, it's a different, different sport, basically, you know. So... Uh, when the coronavirus will go away, hopefully one day, mm -hmm. and you guys go back on the court, how is the ATP handling the points? So is it frozen at the moment, or how does it work? So the way it's going to work, until the end of the year, they, uh, they're gonna, the points are going to work the same way. So like if you win you know, the tournament, you're going to get the same amount of the points as before. But if you don't play, you're not going to lose the points that you were supposed to defend, right? So that means all the points that I was supposed to defend throughout the September, October, November, they're just going to be postponed for another 12 months. And I will have to defend them next year in September, October, and November, right? So if you decide not to play because of whatever reason, you know, like you're not going to lose points. But if you decide to play, then you still have a chance to gain points, right? So um, there is a... Let's say it's it's a fair way, you know, and uh, just like for some people, you know, from Asia maybe or like different parts of the world, it's going to be tougher to travel because mm -hmm. most of the tournaments I feel it's going to be, I feel like it's going to be, you know, in, in States and Europe. Yeah. So, so from, it is fair, it isn't, you know, like from, I, 
most like it's really tough to find the the you know the most fair weight for everybody. So I think this seems like a, the best the best um, solution, you know. So you and, guys uh, don't have so much to defend until that September comes. So so we have actually end of August to defend a lot and sep like three challengers basically end of August and the September. But we're not gonna lose lose those points, you know, because they're gonna they're gonna. They're gonna drop next. They're gonna be postponed for another 12 months. So from that point of view, we're a little bit lucky, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, and then yeah, we just have to see now what's gonna happen next week. What's gonna happen with US Open? You know, like if they're gonna cancel it or not. It looks like it's going on for now, but they have to make a decision until 31st of July. And then we'll see if you know if they do cancel it, which I hope is not gonna happen. Then we're gonna see what what effect is gonna have to the rest of the calendar, you know. And um, so we still didn't make any 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 plans really. I have some issues with my calf as well. I still didn't start to practice like fully, so I have to I've had to deal with that too. And um, as I said, you know, we gotta wait another week or two to to be more wise about that. So, and yeah. aren't you right now in California? So I'm in California right now. Yeah. Who you train with? Right? When, 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 before you got hurt a tiny bit again, like, who did you hit with? So I was, I was here right, right after Derry Beach. I flew here. I was supposed to play Indian Wells, mm -hmm. uh, Challenger, and uh, then everything got cancelled. You know, I have a girlfriend here, so I decided to stay with her. Mm -hmm. It was a, you know, a great, great uh, yeah. opportunity for, you know, for my private life also, like to come into the, mm -hmm. into the, finally into the priority. <laughs> and, uh, I have a, I have a, the one guy who's helping me out here. He's from Split, actually, oh, living nice. here already for 20 years. Uh, his name is Jerko Bezel. Uh, he's been, he's been uh, work. He, he has a really interesting story. He's been working with uh, um, the the coach named the the first coach of Sampras, uh, Lenzrop, Robert oh. Lenzrop. I don't yeah. heard you. Lenzrop. Yeah, Lenzrop. Yeah. So. Uh, um, I got to know him like last year. It's really interesting stories, you know, because Sampras was my, you know, idol, idol growing up. So like uh, I got to know like all these inside stories about Pete and uh, all this stuff. And uh, and yeah, so he's helping me out here as a as a coach a little bit. And then you know I was, as I said, unfortunately I was I was injured a lot during this quarantine time. So uh, I was practicing maybe five to six weeks like overall. But yeah, there's a few guys that I know around LA that you know I was I was um, I was practicing in Carson a little bit in the USDA Center. Mm -hmm. I was practicing uh, with Jason Jung in uh, Peninsula Racquet Club, which is a uh, South Bay, and then uh, with a few juniors, few, few UCLA guys. So there's a lot of lot of lot of good players around LA. Nice, nice, yeah. nice, nice. Yeah. Well, Ante, mm -hmm. well, uh, you see, time time flies. Almost like 45 minutes already. Yeah. Um, yeah, Ante, as I said, you know, I thought your story, you know, like now going from singles and you're knocking at the door and doubles, you know, top 100 now. So I personally feel the journey go, will go very, very high for you. And I mm -hmm. hope, I hope Thanks I a lot. See you, I hope I see you very, very soon. So, um, yeah. Thank you very much, Davor. It was, it was a pleasure uh, to talk to you and... Uh, like this officially through the you know through the Instagram I'm like <laughs> for now, first time now officially on it. Yeah. No, but so, uh, yeah as I said I hope I'll see you soon if, if they play the US Open you know I don't know spectators they're not allowed right so yeah I would, yeah, I would yeah. have to watch you on it's TV gonna be, then it's gonna be like NBA like what you see right now you know the the tryouts no spectators yeah. and like you're gonna hear everything you know and everybody doing any kind of noise so <laughs> yeah, it's, it's yeah. different it's different well Ante thank you for your time on a Sunday we hear each other on the phone and uh, that was awesome I had a lot of fun and uh, I hope um, I hope you have a good start in the week tomorrow and we stay in touch my friend you too have a great day and uh, see you soon thank you Ante okay. Ida Bog Brate Bog Bog Brate Bog Bog yeah Ante super see the insights are amazing um, fantastic guy. It was really fun. Thanks everybody who uh, joined us today. You, you heard some stories. That there was good, good, good stuff. You know, with when he beat Kokonakis and Kyrgios, you know, still gets up there and 
says, hey, great job, man. It was an awesome match. So those little insights are amazing. And uh, you see how the struggle is on the tour um, with the prize money. So uh, I will always fight for the increase, increasement of the prize money because people can survive, you know, even if you're right below 100. So um, it's sad. It's sad to see if it affects your friends. I have many friends who still play, but let's see. Let's see how that uh, goes. And then 10 10 10's birthday is today. Happy birthday. <laughs> and uh, yeah, guys, so Fernando Gonzalez, hopefully this week, at the end of the week, maybe next the following week. And I'm working on a couple of more WTA players. So I hope I want to get Magda in here as well. Magda, if you're still here. And uh, thanks, everybody, for listening. It was fun today. <laughs>